Hey guys, Ivan here, and in this video we have a couple of interesting news and bodybuilding updates as well, but we are gonna start with the big man himself, right here you can see BR, Big Ramy. The winter is coming, it is cold again. So this is Big Ramy right now, and his face is getting dialed in. Every time we see him, he looks more shredded, in the face at least, and that tends to mean that he is getting in shape everywhere else. Chiseled face means good conditioning, and Big Ramy seems to be bringing it. He also says his t-shirt says the world is not big enough. And he has been posting a lot of videos actually on his YouTube channel. So I guess this is his new YouTube channel. I wasn't subscribed to it before. And he's posting these kind of short videos of himself training. And uh, this is his final set, which is a drop set. So <laughs> imagine how strong he was on his first set. But what is more important uh, other than weight here is the way he looks. And his arms are starting to get much harder. He looks hard, he looks full, he looks round, he looks big. And there is a lot of veins, great vascularity through the arms and just overall hardness. And again, the face. So I'm guessing Big Remy will be in shape this year. And I hope last year wasn't just luck. I hope him and Chad Nichols actually figured out the formula. And if that's the case, if they bring the conditioning again, then it's probably gonna be lights out for everybody else. Big Remy is... Big Ramy, man. Everybody thought he's going to become the Mr. Olympia. It was only the matter of time once he figures out the conditioning. He did that. He won the damn thing. Now, Brandon Curry, he can improve a lot. I think Brandon is going to be much better this year. And he's going to pose a serious threat to Big Ramy. But as long as Ramy comes in sharp, it's pretty much lights out for everybody else. So this is him doing some drop sets on T-bar rows. Yes, 9 plates, but not 45 pound plates. These are, I believe, 35 pound plates. Still really impressive, especially considering how many reps he does. And I love that Dennis James, who is, by the way, training Big Ramy these days, is doing these kind of intensifiers. And this is a lot of volume, a lot of intensity. As Patrick Tour likes to say, the density of the sets is increased. And this is creating a metabolic stress. And this is gonna help get Big Ram in shape for sure. And then you add a couple of other things into the equation. So posing drills of Dennis James, those are definitely gonna be a big aid. Also Chad Nichols and his crazy diets. Then Big Ram with his insane genetics. And crazy work ethic of this athlete equals a Mr. Olympia champion. And this is the posing drill that Big Ram went through with Dennis James in 2016. As you can see, Big Ramy still had a gyno, later he, he removed it. And you can see that his physique was still really big, but it wasn't matured enough. And with added maturity, he appears to be much larger. And no, he didn't really add a lot of size since then. He was, I believe, 316 pounds on stage in 2016, something like that. And today he's like uh, less than that, he's like 290 or something, and he looks much bigger. Is he simply leaner with the same weight or is the maturity thing something else? Like uh, with training the muscle for a long time, the, the, the muscle fibers grow over each other and it just uh, appears, you know, harder, denser. I don't know what is the case, but he definitely does seem more muscular, more conditioned, harder, thicker, denser, bigger. And again, if he repeats the conditioning from last year, this year, He's most likely going to win the Mr. Olympia again. Brandon Curry is going to challenge Big Ramy heavily. Heidi Chopin as well, probably, and some other guys too. But I think Big Ramy is the most dominant up there. But he's not exactly known for consistency with conditioning. Hopefully that's going to change this year with his new coach. I hope Chad just didn't hit that conditioning accidentally. I hope he knows what he did and he can repeat that again. And I'm showing you this photo. I'm talking about something else. This photo is completely out of context. This is an interesting photo that uh, the Big Remy posted with Dennis James. And no, these guys did not hit the club. They went to a show. They watched the show, but they, they, they dressed up. And uh, it's interesting that Big Remy is able to wear jeans. And I know a lot of bodybuilders, classic bodybuilders, who are like three times smaller than Big Ramy, who are saying, oh, bro, I can't wear jeans, I'm too big for that. Big Ramy is wearing jeans. I don't want to hear that, that nonsense anymore from anybody else. If you are not uh, 350, 20, 30 pounds like Big Ramy, 
Uh, and I mean, he is able to wear, and he he has most of that mass in his legs. Unless you're like th 350 and over, you have no right to say you can't wear jeans. I'm pretty sure these are custom made still, but uh, it's crazy to see the Big Ram is able to wear jeans, and it looks good. It does look good. So I'm hoping Big Ram is having fun in the United States right now, training, doing cardio, eating properly, doing everything he can to ensure that victory again, or at least bring an incredible package to Mr. Olympia stage, which most likely will suffice and he will end up being two times Mr. Olympia champion. Honestly, at this point, I don't see anybody really challenging Remy for that title, aside from the former Mr. Olympia champion, 2019 Olympia winner Brandon Curry, who also posted some biceps training video in which he looks... Well, impressive is definitely an understatement. He's showing more skin, though, and he probably has a crazy pump here. The lighting is really good, better than that that big Ramy had in his video. But look at the size of, of Brandon. He's definitely going for the fullness route. Probably not just by eating a ton of food and doing certain certain gear, but also by training heavy, lifting heavy weights. Look at this form here on the bicep curls, it's definitely questionable, but he's trying to lift as heavy as possible, and that is definitely one of the ways to maintain the fullness. It is a little bit more risky, but he's still doing a lot of reps, he's doing some basically cheat curls uh, with a lot, of, a lot of reps, which of course gets the job done for him, don't get me wrong, I'm not, I'm not criticizing his form, he is the Mr. Olympia winner, he has one of the best arms like in history of bodybuilding, those arms are really freaking impressive, so whatever he's doing is working for him, but I'm just pointing out, he's trying to lift heavy because he wants to stay big, he wants to be big when he stands next to Remy, which is something he needs to do, be big as he can be and still be conditioned, which is probably going to be more conditioned than big Remy. If you're not sure what I mean, let me just try to explain. So this was him 2019 when he won the Mr. Olympia. The leap from 2018 to 2019 was rather big for Brandon Curry. He made significant amount of progress, he made so much gains. His legs were bigger and fuller, he was all over, all around, bigger and fuller, he was pretty hard, and he was just the best man on that stage that day, which wasn't really that hard to do, there was no Phil Heath, there was no Sean Roden, no Big Remy, he only had to beat William Bonac and Hardy, still he was the best man on that stage right there, next year, 2020, he improved a lot his physique, like he did every year before, that's why I loved Brandon so much, because he would always bring a different and better package, year after year, now, 2020, he wanted to come conditioned, because he improved some body parts, he gained more muscle in his legs, I believe, especially in those teardrops, the, the vastus medialis, it definitely looked more muscular, and overall he was just better, but he came a little bit too dry, and so he lost the fullness and the roundness, because he was expecting to be battling Phil Heath for the first spot, not Big Ramy, and Big Ramy simply outmassed the entire lineup, he blew everyone away with his crazy mass, and now Brandon knows what he's going against, so he will go with the fullness, and right now he looks absolutely amazing at 5 weeks out, and guys, we're gonna have a showdown, an epic showdown, it's going to be amazing watching these two guys, and everybody else on that Mr. Olympia stage, 5 weeks out of one of the most impressive Mr. Olympias of all time, it's going to be an amazing event, stay tuned guys. Are we going to see this guy, this mass monster on that Mr. Olympia stage? I don't know, I mean this guy is a freak, he's like 285 at this point, but this photo was taken 2 weeks ago, so this was 5 weeks out of Arnold Classic, if he wants to get to that Mr. Olympia stage, he needs to win the Arnold Classic, can he win Arnold Classic? It, it's, a, it's a challenge, it's really tough, he was 4th last year, uh, just behind Dexter, Big Remy and William Bonac. he doesn't have to face Big Remy and Dexter this year, that's a relief, but he needs to beat Ian Valier, who beat him at Texas Pro, he needs to beat William Bonac, who won the Arnold Classic last year, so it's not impossible, but it's a really big challenge. But considering how he looks at 5 weeks out of Arnold Classic, it's not impossible, it's not impossible. In my prediction video, I gave him second spot. 
I can definitely see him taking out Ian. I can see that. It's going to be really tough because Ian is probably going to be improved. But Ian cannot be as hungry as Steve because Steve needs to win in order to go to the Mr. Olympia. If he doesn't do that, what was he prepping for? To be second at the Texas? To be, I don't know, third, fourth at the Arnold again? That's not gonna do it for him. It's not gonna make him happy. He needs to be, well, at least second at the Arnold. He needs at least to beat Ian and be second to be a runner-up at the Arnold to say that he had a, a kind of successful season. But if he doesn't go to the Olympia stage, and this guy is an Olympian. He was top six in the Mr. Olympia 2019. So he needs to be on that stage if he wants to feel successful. And uh, that is why I believe he's driven enough to actually make that, to make to make those changes and to actually do really well at the Arnold. But again, to beat William Bonac, that's, uh, that's a real challenge because Bonac is just another level. Bonac is a first tier bodybuilder and Steve, he's more of a second tier bodybuilder, but maybe this year things will change, maybe Bonac will drop down to second tier and Steve will take his place in that first tier, it's not impossible. Uh, by the way, this is him training uh, at uh, three weeks out of Arnold Classic, he's doing some uh, pack deck flies and he's doing not only posing after the set, but this is something that his coach, Henry Rambert, usually incorporates in his workouts. After a set, you do some static posing or squeezing the muscle. This is part of a workout, actually. And he looks great in this pose as well. Look at those striations in chest. They are looking really deep. And that's something Steve is not known for. He is not known for having the deepest cuts, the deepest striations. And it seems like that's changing. Is it maturity? Is it simply conditioning? I don't know. But it looks like he did improve in that, in that uh, I wouldn't say a region or a body part, I'd say in that regard. So he does look better this year, harder, more matured, uh, denser, bigger, more conditioned. So can he make that much of a leap to win the Arnold Classic? It would be a huge upset, it would be a big surprise, but I'm not saying it's impossible. We'll see in about three weeks what he's gonna look like. Is he gonna be able to beat Ian to, to, to have his revenge? or to win the Arnold Classic and go to the Mr. Olympia stage. We'll see, we'll see. Does he look great right now? He absolutely does. Good Wito wins Big Peter. <laughs> I don't know which show this is. Big Peter, I'm from Europe, and I believe we compete in the same federation, but I'm not familiar with this show. It's probably some uh, Ukrainian or Russian show. Uh, though he won it, and he looked damn impressive. He looks like somebody who can do really well in Pro League, for sure, no doubt about that. Here's a little bit more of a closer look of his physique at about four days before this show. So he doesn't really go with the super crazy conditioning, because he doesn't need to. I mean, the amount of size that he has, it just carries him through all these shows, and he wins all of them. Nobody is really this muscular in, in his federation. He can just be kinda lean and super massive as he is, and that's enough. He doesn't need to catabolize his body uh, in order to be super conditioned, because it's not necessary. He can win shows like this. I'm sure it's only a matter of time when he switches to the IFBB Pro League, because he's going to do some serious damage over there. You can clearly see that the difference between him and the runner-up is rather large. He completely outclassed and outmassed this guy. As I said, the conditioning doesn't matter, though from behind he just has so much muscle and he looks harder. He looks definitely very hard from behind, but even if he came like 5% softer, he would have still nailed this show, he would have beaten everybody, because look at this guy on the right, I mean, he's not in his, in his level, he's uh, having fun, he's playing around with these guys, he's just not supposed to be there. It's not fair for these guys, man. Go to the Pro League. What the hell are you doing doing uh, Peter Pro Show, whatever. So he can definitely be a great IFB Pro League competitor. I can definitely see him, you know, cracking like the, the, the top uh, six, top eight at the New York Pro type of show. Probably top six. I can see that as long as he comes sharp. So I really hope and I, and I can't wait to see him in Pro League because he's going to do some serious damage. He won this show now, and that, that's great. That's great for him. But it's, he did that with ease. It's not a challenge, really. I, I think he's bored over there. I mean, he looks amazing, and he's having fun with his, with his guys that are looking like, like kids standing next to him. So 
it is time, Vito, to go to the Pro League. Go get that Pro card. Do some Pro shows. You, you're ready for it. And for the end of this video, we have an evidence that Tom Platts really had knees of steel. He is 66 years old and he's doing 3 plates for 12 reps. <laughs> and he's doing ass to grass squats. For years and decades of squatting heavy, heavy, heavy weights, ass to grass form, being 66 and not having knee problems, still being able to lift 3 plates, man, this is ridiculous. I'm 25 and my knees are hurting me. <laughs> already and I know a lot of guys who are younger than me and have knee problems Tom Platts he probably had like indestructible knees at 66 doing this and, and having enough muscle to be this strong wow this this guy is like a god of squats for sure I don't know I don't, this is ridiculous I did not expect to see this I did not expect this Tom Platts 12 reps 3 plates 66 years old how many guys, how many of you can do this? Three plates for, for 12 reps. You watching this. And you are like probably in your 20s or 30s. So this is heavy weight. Heavy weight. And for, for his age, ridiculous. Ridiculous, man. So I had to share this with you guys. Tell me what you think about whichever part of this video. Also, don't forget to subscribe. And uh, thank you so much, guys, for watching. All the best and bye-bye.